The Prophet ﷺ said, none of you will have faith until he wishes for his brother what he wishes for himself. I wish for a meal for iftar. I wish for a drink to end my fast. I wish for a joyous Eid. For some, wishes are simple needs that we can fulfill. This Ramadan, join AMA in fulfilling the wishes of families in need across the world. No one will care for you like your parents will care for you. At Anur Education Center, we give children a loving home, a boys and girls hostel. We provide them with clothing, food and education. Be the child's parent by sponsoring a student for 18,000 rands or 1,500 rand per month. Anur Education Center, a place where children call home. Oh, 
وتحسبهم أيقاظا وهم رقود ونقلبهم ذات اليمين وذات الشمال وكلبهم لو اطلعت عليهم لوليت منهم فرارا ولملئت منهم ربا وكذلك بعثناهم ليتساءلوا بينهم قال قائل منهم كم لبثتم قالوا لبثنا يوما أو بعض يوم قالوا ربكم أعلم بما لبثتم فبعثوا أحدكم هذه إلى المدينة فلينظر أيها أزقى طعاما فليأتكم برزق منه أيها أزقى طعاما فليأتكم برزق منه وليتلطف ولا يشعرن بكم أحدا إنهم إن يظهروا عليكم يرجموكم أو يعيدوكم في ملتهم ولو تفلحوا إذا أبدا وكذلك أعثرنا عليهم ليعلموا أن وعد الله حق وأن الساعة لا ريب فيها إذ يتنازعون بينهم أمرهم فقالوا ابنوا عليهم بنيانا ربهم أعلم بهم قال تخذن عليهم مسجدا سيقولون ثلاثة رابعهم 
كلبهم ويقولون خمسة ويقولون خمسة سادسهم كلبهم رجما بالغيب ويقولون سبعة وثامنهم كلبهم قل ربي أعلم بعدتهم ما يعلمهم إلا قليل فلا تمار فيهم فلا تمار فيهم إلا مراء ظاهرا ولا تستفت فيهم ولا تستفت فيهم منهم أحد قد الله العظيم My dearly beloved Jamaatul Muslimin, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi Ta'ala wa Barakatuh. Alhamdulillah on this beautiful sacred day of Jumu'ah, the Friday Jumu'ah immediately after the glorious month of Ramadan, it gives me great pleasure indeed to present you our speaker for today, who really asked me to give no fanciful introductions I must just introduce him as Brother Irfan Kasim, and very basically he is a C the CEO of Muslim Hands. He is a financial professional for over 25 years. He has graduated as MBA from the University of Cape Town, and he is certified in IT Internal Auditor. He will be speaking to us today on a very relevant topic after Ramadan, the need for Muslim hands to reach out. He's also the nephew of our great Shaheed, Imam Abdullah Harun, of whom I will refer to later on, inshallah. But uh, without further ado, I call upon, upon Brother Irfan Kasim to kindly address us for later Fadl Mashkura. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ربي اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد after greeting we ask Allah to bestow grace mercy and honor on our beloved Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
and the family of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Shukran to Sheikh Abdurrahman Alexander. Um, I asked him to keep it short, but he, he read out quite a few uh, things about me, which happened very long ago. Um, but for now, I am just with Muslims. And uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what it is that we do and what it is that you can do to help us, inshallah. But first and foremost, as Sheikh rightly said, this is the first Jumu'ah after Ramadan. And I would be a miss if I didn't thank the community of Cape Town for the generous donations that they made during the month of Ramadan. Shukran, Jazilan to everybody who so generously gave of their money. And we know times are hard, times are tough, everybody is struggling. But Alhamdulillah, people came in their droves to our office online via EFTs. And Alhamdulillah, shukr to each and everybody who donated. Because without those donations, we cannot do what we are doing. The work that Muslims are doing, we are doing on your behalf. So who are we? Who is Muslims? Muslims was started in 1993 in the city of Nottingham in England. And in 1993, there was the war in the Balkans, in Bosnia, where Muslims were persecuted. Muslims were killed. They were driven out of their homes. And a small community in Nottingham started to collect money, clothing, and medicine to send to these brothers and sisters who were now homeless and destitute. And alhamdulillah, 30 years later, Muslim hands is still doing that and more throughout the world. In 1996, Muslim hands came to South Africa. So for close to almost 30 years as well, Muslim hands has been here. 27 years Muslim hands have been in South Africa. And what we do is exactly the same things that we did back then. I just returned recently from Turkey and Syria where we had the earthquake. And although the, that was a natural disaster, but as I drove through the province of Hatay, which is in um, uh, southern Turkey, I saw destruction and devastation, and it looked like a war zone. And obviously, we heard about over 50,000 people who lost their lives. But there were also over 2 million people who were left homeless. Because most of the buildings that they lived in were destroyed. People lost loved ones. So as uh, we know in Ramadan, we were strong, we, we, we donated our zakah, we gave sadaqah, we um, volunteered, and we fed the person who fasted, because those were the rewards that were available during Ramadan. If we did those good deeds and any other good deeds, the rewards were multiplied. But that doesn't mean that we must stop now that Ramadan is ended. The need is even greater now, because many people have now stopped to give to those people who are most in need. So that is why it is important for us now that Ramadan is over to continue in this vein and not to lose sight of what we've done during Ramadan. I'm going to share with you some of the stories of my visits, not just to Turkey, but also to West Africa. While I was in Niger, the earthquake actually happened. So before I, I, I went to Turkey, I spent a couple of weeks in Niger and Mali in, in West Africa. And here, Muslim hands are busy with poverty alleviation projects because what I personally saw, and I've never seen poverty to that level before in my life. When, uh, um, I mean, we are used to comforts on weekends, we go to malls and we, we go to cinemas or whatever we do. But in those countries, those two specific countries which I visited, there was none of those things. The people don't even have drinking water. 
In order for people to have water, they must walk kilometers. And mostly it is the children and the women who go and fetch the water. But again, and, and I cannot emphasize this enough because I am very proud to represent all of you as the head of Muslim Men South Africa. And I'll tell you why. Muslim Men have got five fundraising offices throughout the world. Five fundraising offices where they raise funds and those funds are being utilized where it's needed the most, where the vulnerable people are. We know, we all know about Palestine and Yemen and all those other countries, Pakistan, but in Africa, in Southeast Asia, there, there are many uh, communities that live in abject poverty. And these five Muslim men's countries, they are the countries where the offices, where funds are being raised. And why I'm so proud is that South Africa is one of those five countries, but we in South Africa have our own challenges. The other four countries are England, first world country, the United States of America, who is the powerhouse, Canada and France. Four very wealthy countries, four first world countries. But South Africa, alhamdulillah, we, we, we have our own challenges, we, we have poverty, where people are struggling. We are also one of those countries, one of only five. And whenever I meet fellow Muslim and people from the other countries, I am very proud to represent this community because the Muslim community of South Africa, our hearts, because of our, our past where we come from, our hearts are always with the most vulnerable people, with the people who suffer the most. And, and for that reason, I am extremely proud to represent all of you. So let me tell you one story about um, Turkey. I know our time is, is, is limited, but I just want to share a story with, uh, to, to the Jama about Turkey, and I think uh, Sheikh and, and the other uh, ulama who's here will appreciate it. We went, as Muslim men, the, the Turkish government, they, 11 provinces were affected by this earthquake, but the Turkish government, they divided it into various regions. So they gave us, as Muslim men, Hatay province. And one of the reasons they gave us, our name is Muslim Men, Hatay province, is that 40% of the population of Hatay province are non-Muslim. So first of all, what the Turkish government wanted to show is to show that here's an organization, Muslim Men, they are seen as a Muslim organization, but they are here to help everybody, not just Muslim people. But in Hatay province, there's a town called Antakya, ancient Antioch. And why is ancient Antioch so important? If we go to Surah Yasin in the Quran, there's a verse, Waja Akasal Madina to Rajalu Yasa. In that verse it says, and from the furthest part of the city came a man. Now who was this man? This man, his name was Habib Al Najah. Now Habib Al Najah, his masjid is in Antakya. And we went to visit his masjid. And again, I, I, I'm not going to say his masjid wasn't affected by the earthquake, but it wasn't destroyed. But everything around that masjid was completely destroyed. But Abib al Najah is a very important man because this was before the time of Islam. In that area, when uh, disciples of Nabi Isa came and to tell the people to follow the true message. But the people, they did not adhere and they did not listen like people normally do. And Habib al Najah, he told the people, please listen, this is the truth that these people are spreading. But he was martyred. And for me, it was, it was a, a significant moment. When I went there, I didn't know any of these things. But we had a, a person with us who, who is a learned scholar, and he told us, all of these things. And again, um, we as Muslim and South Africa, we are looking at taking it upon ourselves, not just us, but many others, but we will also contribute to restoring that masjid, to make it that people can go back to worship again. I was there about, just before Ramadan, so it's about six weeks ago, and at that time, 
Um, like I said, everything around it was destroyed. But the masjid was also severely affected, but not destroyed, and it was still standing. But we were also told that that masjid was affected by an earthquake before, during the time of the Ottoman Empire. But it was restored by, by the Turkish government. So those are some of the, the, the things that we do, but I also need to tell you about a concept that we call the model village of Muslims. And in the villages in Africa, but not just in Africa, inshallah we will be bringing that to South Africa as well because we have actually done some fantastic work in South Africa just before Ramadan and during Ramadan as well. Now, now the model villages that, that, that we do in Muslims, it is where people do not have drinking water in, in their villages. And I've seen it, and it's, and it's very sad when, when, when you see people, they, they are washing their clothing, animals are grazing in, in these water, and then people used to drink it as well. And that is why there's so many waterborne diseases in Africa. Many people die of malaria. And, and, and it's mainly because of the waterborne diseases. So we provide them with water source, um, solar powered filtration plants. And when you see an 80 year old seeing a tap open and running water coming out for the first time in his life, those are the things that you cannot fade them because we are used to just opening the tap and water comes out. When, when our lights go out for load shedding, we curse ESCOM, we curse the government. But these people, they live without electricity. So solar powered lights are also installed in these villages. Street lights, not inside the, 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 the dwellings, but on the, on the outside in the street so that people at least can see at night because sometimes the, the taps are not in their homes. They need to still walk to a point where the water is to go get the water. So uh, solar powered street lamps. Schools are erected for the children. Normally, these kids would never go to school. But again, alhamdulillah, thanks to the generosity of people like yourselves, your donations, we are able to build schools for, for people. Clinics. And, and another sad story from my visit where, where, where I saw, uh, we went into a village where there was no clinic. Um, there was a makeshift uh, uh, type of building where the residents of this village saw it as, as a type of a clinic. And one day we went into this village to do um, eye, uh, eye testing because we also do the gift of sight as they call it. Um, we, we, we test people, their vision, and normally we find they've got cataracts and then we get that removed and, and some other uh, small surgeries that, that enable people to see again. So at this day, Muslim hands had a clinic in this village, a, a, a eye clinic where people could come for testing. And then I was called into a room and on the floor, a concrete slab, there was a woman lying in severe pain crying. And I was told that this woman gave birth yesterday and the baby was stillborn. But she was lying on the floor. On a concrete slab, uh, on a concrete slab, because there was no hospital in that village, no clinic. So, what we then did, we then provided that village with, we cannot call it a hospital, but a type of a clinic. And and I was surprised that the equipment came so quickly because I was skeptical when when the leader of our delegation said to me. We will come back here in two days' time and we will fit this place out with a, a, a clinic. We will give them beds and also we will give them um, a sonogram where people can see uh, how the baby is doing inside the mother. Because I didn't see any uh, malls or shops, I myself was skeptical. I thought this guy was only uh, talking. but. Alhamdulillah, two days later, we went back to that village and we fitted uh, that place out as a clinic. And everybody is welcome to go to our website. There's videos up. I think some of the videos even played on the TV during the month of Ramadan, where people can see what was done to this village. 
Now, that is the kind of conditions that the people are living under in Africa. Another important part of when we give charity, the best of charity, obviously, is, as we are taught, is to give people water and to give people land on which to farm. Now, what Muslim men also do in these model villages is provide people with farming skills, where people can then produce their own crops. And these crops are not just for the people to eat. They produce their food for, for the village as well, and they share it amongst the people. But it is also whatever excess production there is, they take to the market. And they are earning valuable currency for the village. And then finally, in the model village, there's also a masjid. And if you go onto our website at muslimans.org.za, you will see all of these things that, that I have been talking to you about. But the sad reality is the need is huge. I myself never experienced this before until I went to visit these countries. The needs are massive. And like I said, after Ramadan, normally we slack off. Not just when it comes to, to giving charity. We slack off in, in the other ibadah that we did during the month of Ramadan as well. But it is important to maintain the momentum. If we maintain this momentum all year round, I think we will be able to become much better people and we will be able to build a much better society for ourselves where we are living as well. Because as I said, we also are facing many challenges in our environment. There is gangsterism, there's drug abuse, and all those kind of things which are happening in our communities. And unfortunately, we cannot get everywhere. But, alhamdulillah, we are trying to go to where the need is the greatest. And just in, in South Africa, also now, just recently, during the same time, when the earthquake happened in, in Turkey, there was floods in the Eastern Cape, in uh, Konami, which was formerly known as Queenstown. And Muslim hands was also able to go and assist in that area as well. And the people are extremely grateful. Just last week for Juma, I was in George. And because we went to, to George before Ramadan and we did some work in that community, the reception that we got when we got to George last week, and the people cannot thank our donors enough. Now, these people are making dua all the time for our donors. Now, imagine what beautiful reward that is for us, because our donors never forget where the donation was coming from, who are the people who provided the assistance. Although Muslim man is the vehicle, but as I said, and, 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 and I keep on harping on this, because I don't think we, we say it enough. I always tell the people at the office as well, we do not say it enough that our donors are the people who give us the privilege to do what we do. Because for, for us, who is working in the office and who is working in the field and going to do this work, it is an honor and a privilege, but we will not get that honor and that privilege without the donations that we get from yourselves. And it is in that vein that we need to continue and, and look at other areas where we can also donate. And just finally, I want to share something with you as well. We know that in Palestine, Lots of things happen during the month of Ramadan, and there's a great need uh, in Palestine. And alhamdulillah, in two weeks, Muslim men's, we, we just put out the word on our social platforms. We didn't even advertise it widely. Just on our social platforms, we, we, we put out that, listen, we need you to support the people in Palestine. Within two weeks, the donations that flooded into our office exceeded what we did in the previous two months before Ramadan. That again shows me and shows us in our office how our people are connected to the people of Palestine. And inshallah, very, very soon, 
we at Muslim Hands will be having a, a very big drive. We, we will be uh, looking at initiatives uh, in Palestine. We're already doing some for the farmers because as, as we've been told, uh, farming is a very good uh, type of sadaqa to give. So currently we are busy with, uh, with the farmers who are, who are planting olive trees and there's many other initiatives that we are working on. But inshallah, that we will leave for, for another time because uh, Sheikh did tell me uh, I must stop at one o'clock and I think I have just gone over the, the one o'clock mark. But once again, I just want to say shukran to uh, Sheikh, the Imamat and the committee at Masjid Al-Quds for giving us the opportunity to come speak to you today about what it is that we do and how it is that everybody here can get invo uh, involved as well. But just finally, uh, I know I'm over time. What we also need, we need volunteers. So please go onto our website and register to become a Muslim man's volunteer. It's not just money that uh, uh, you can contribute, your skills, your expertise to help us. And when I went to Mali, Niger, I took one volunteer with me. So there's opportunities for volunteers to get involved and get um, out into the field and see firsthand what it is like and to support those people. So shukran once again. Wa khir da'wana and alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa salamu rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Takbir. Allahu Akbar wa lillahi alhamd. We say shukran, jazakallah khair, and bait ramakasi to Brother Irfan Kasim, CEO of the Muslim Hands. MashaAllah, so beautiful and very uh, emotionally stirred us with the reality out there amongst the community who are totally underprivileged, not only locally, but internationally as well. Muslim Hands, as you know, along with our numerous other Muslim organizations are doing sterling work in bringing relief and much aided um, much needed aid to the underprivileged communities. And he has rightly acknowledged the role of the broader Muslim community with regard to your generosity and the way you positively respond always. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our entire Muslim community and Allah richly reward you and bless you and your families for always responding positively and generously to the call whenever it is made for help or for aid. Of course, Brother Irfan Kasim is, a, is the CEO of Muslim Hands. He is a financial professional for over 25 years. He is a graduate on, in B, MBA from UCT, University of Cape Town, and he is a certified IT internal auditor. And he so beautifully spoke to us today on the topic after Ramadan, the need for Muslim hands to reach out. Not only Muslim hands as an organization, but Muslim hands as a ummah and as a community to maintain that beautiful spirit that we have imbibed throughout the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Amin ya rabbal alameen. Just a few announcements with regard to request for du'as shifa. We have been asked to make dua shifa for Akila Miller from her mother, Shaham Miller, who is in hospital. Also, the daughter, Nuran Abrams, asked to make dua shifa for her father, Farid Abrams from Peru, and dua for Haji Ahmad Sukha, who is undergoing certain medical procedures for his well-being and his health, inshallah. And also dua for... Hafiz Imran Hassan, our official Qari, who was not well for some time. He is back today, alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him continuous good health. And also dua shifa for one of our fathers, regular fathers, five times a day in the masjid, Ajay Abdurrahman Sheikh. And that is such an exemplary father. You know, when I look at him going through... Um, uh, so many procedures, so many procedures, but he makes sure that he's here when the Adhan goes off five times a day, he is here. A lesson especially that we as youth can take. 
If this is our fathers, then this is the road and the footsteps that we must follow, inshallah. May Allah grant shifa to all the sick people at home and in hospital. May Allah grant forgiveness and jannah to offer those to all our deceased people. And may Allah keep all of us on the sirat al-mustaqim. Amen. And last but not least, I want to bid a special welcome to a lady all the way from Turkey, that is Ummi Kulthum Bilan. She came from Turkey to specially attend the inquest about the murder of our Ashahid, our father of the community, Imam Abdullah Harun, who was killed, brutally killed and murdered in 1969 in the cells and the prisons of apartheid. It's something that we will never ever forget as a community, the ultimate sacrifice that Imam Abdullah Harun rahmatullahi made to sacrifice his life for the oppressed people of South Africa against an unjust government of the, of the day, the apartheid government of the NP, the national parliament. And I see many of our elderly people at the back shaking and nodding their head with approval because you can well remember those terrible days of apartheid that we have had to endure. When people of a darker skin color couldn't just walk anywhere in the roads in South Africa without the dom pass, without a pass because they needed to prove that they are allowed to live here under the white supremacist apartheid regime, which we as youth of those times we, f we suffered heartache, we suffered persecution and torture, we suffered baton charges, we suffered hiding in the prisons of apartheid. They shocked the daylights out of us because we stood up against apartheid. We also welcomed the daughter of Imam Abdullah Harun, Haji Fatima Masud, who is present here, Harun Rasud. With the lady Kulthum Bilan, we pray that the inquest which has again started probing the death of Imam Harun, the terrible death that he was thrown down the stairs and how he was murdered and tortured, the truth about his actual murder is coming to light now. Let us pray and make dua that Allah brings out the truth because truth is something, the very nature of truth can never, can never be buried under the carpet forever. Never. The truth will always prevail and battle by its very nature will perish. I last saw the widow of Imam Abdullah Harun and the Halima before she passed away. I went to visit her for 50 long years. She suffered in silence cried for her husband, raised her children, a fearless woman raising her children after the terrible murder of her husband, our father, Imam Abdullah Harun. Allah took her away in such a beautiful state that she has now joined unity with her beloved husband in the highest of Jannah. Amen. Let the death of Imam Harun be an eye-opening lesson for us. Never fear to stand for justice. Never fear to stand for the truth, even at the expense of our own lives, because this life is short. We are going to leave this world. We are going to die. And what better way to die than to stand for truth, to stand for justice, and be on the side of Allah. So to my dear sister, our dear sister, Fatima Masud Harun, who is present here, we say to you and your family, it's not only you, you have lost a father. We, the entire community and ummah, have, have lost a father in the person of Imam Abdullah Harun. And may Allah grant, as Allah made an eye-opener that day, and again the people will nod their heads, because you remember in 1969, in September, that day when the great Imam Abdullah Harun Rahmatullahi was buried, that night, how the whole of the Western Cape was shaking with a tremor. 
as if Allah has showed his displeasure to the way our father Imam Abdullah Harun was killed and murdered. And that tremor was felt here from Cape Town right through to Tolbach, Worcester and many affected areas. If you go to Tolbach today, I was there with my Tuesday morning housewife class. I took them to the museum in Tolbach. There is a big museum of that time of the earthquake here in Cape Town. Please, the youth, my young brothers and sisters, get in touch with the recent history of your own country first, and then you will appreciate this country more and will get more involved in getting involved and be part of the struggle to get South Africa out of this rut and abyss of darkness, of suffering that we are all in, darkness of load shedding and all the nonsensical things that are happening because of a useless government that we have at this moment. We need to get involved and bring South Africa out of the rut and make it a thriving country once again. Can I hear you say, Amen? Amen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. May Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all and bless our country of South Africa and bless the entire Ummah throughout the world. Our Arabic khutbah and our salah will be done by my one and only begotten son, Mashallah, Hafiz Muhammad Hashim Alexander. He will do the Arabic khutbah as well as salah, inshallah. May Allah accept from all of us. Can I kindly and respectfully request each and everyone to kindly stand up, step forward, fill up the salves. That the moment the Imam comes from the mimbar, we start the salah immediately. Can I ask everyone's cooperation, please? It will give you good circulation to stand up, let the blood flow down, and throughout our body, mashallah, up. Mashallah, mashallah. It's a beautiful Jummah drill we're having here today. Please come forward, please come forward. Fill up all the gaps. Come to the front. Come. Fill up all the gaps. Wherever you see there's a gap in front of you, that space is rightfully yours. Shukran, Jazakallah Khair, and Bait Ramakas. <coughs> الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول Hayya ala al
حيال الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم إذا الإسلام والمسلمين وعدل شركا والمشركين رب اختم لنا بخير برحمتك يا رحم الرحمين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر شروا الليل غير أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة
حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات بغير عمد الذي خلق الخلق ولم ينس أحد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الواحد الأحد الفرد الصمد وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله نبي ما تطلع الشمس على أعلم منه ولا أعبد صلى الله عليه وآله وأصحابه صلاة وسلاما دائمين متلازمين نفوز بهما يوم الجزاء ونسعد وسلم, وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فيا عباد الله اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون وقال تعالى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أرأيت الذي يكذب بالدين فذلك الذي يدع اليتيم ولا يحض على طعام المسكين فويل للمصلين الذين هم عن صلاتهم ساهون الذين هم يراءون ويمنعون الماعون وقال تعالى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله العظيم أقول قول هذا أستغفر الله أستغفر الله أستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولوالدي ولوالديكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم اللهم صل وسلم وزد وتوعنم ودفد وبارك بزلالك وكمالك على زين عبادك وأشرف نبادك سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وصحبه وسلم سلم رضي الله تبارك وتعالى عن كل صحابة أجمعين الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر والصلاة والسلام على سيد البشر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين وقال تعالى مخبرا وآمرا قولا كريما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد ورض اللهم عن خلفاء الراشدين أمير المؤمنين سيدنا أبي بكر الصديق وأمير المؤمنين سيدنا عمر بن الخطاب وأمير المؤمنين سيدنا عثمان بن عفان وأمير المؤمنين سيدنا علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله تعالى عنهم وعن بقية الصحابة والقرابة والتابعين وتابع التابعين وتابعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اجعل هذا البلد آمنا مطمئنا وسائر بلاد المسلمين أجمعين فاغفر لنا وارحمنا 
وعافنا واعف عنا واحفظنا يا الله يا الله من كل بلاء الدنيا وعذاب الآخرة اللهم عد المسجد الأقصى إلى رحاب المسلمين إلى أخويه المسجد الحرام ومسجد النبوي المدني الشريف آمين يا رب العالمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأتم وأهم وأعظم وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيال الصلاة حيال الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله سيدنا محمد رسول الله الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المكذوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين ولا يتمنونه أبدا بما قدمت أيديهم والله عليم بالظالمين قل إن الموت الذي تفرون منه فإنه ملاقيكم ثم تردون إلى عالم الغيب والشهادة فينبئكم بما كنتم تعملون يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا نودي للصلاة من يوم الجمعة فسعوا إلى ذكر الله فسعوا إلى ذكر الله وذروا البيع ذلكم خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون فإذا قضيت الصلاة فانتشروا في الأرض وابتغوا من فضل الله واذكروا الله كثيرا لعلكم تفلحون وإذا رأوا تجارة أو لهوا فضوا إليها وتركوك قائما قل ما عند الله خير من اللهو ومن التجارة والله خير الرازقين الله سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر 
أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله العظيم وتوب الرحيم الذي لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم نتوب إليك ونسألك توبة ومغفرة إنه هو التواب الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تبارك ربنا وتعالى تهذا الجلال والإكرام سمعنا وطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم اللهم ربنا تقبل منا صلاتنا وصيامنا وقيامنا وركوعنا وسجودنا وتسبيحنا وجميع أعمالنا اللهم ربنا تقبل منا القليل وسامحنا بالكثير ولا تؤاخذنا بالتقصير ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم رب ارحم والدينا كما ربونا صغارا ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب اللهم ربنا اتمم لنا نورنا واغفر لنا انك على كل شيء قدير اللهم ربنا اتنا من لدنك رحمه وهيئ لنا من امرنا رشدا ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنه وفي الاخره حسنه وقنا عذاب النار وادخلنا إن الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا واغفر لنا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم اهدنا يا الله ووفقنا إلى الحق وإلى طريق مستقيم ببركة القرآن يا مولانا يا رب العالمين سبحانك ربنا رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين
The Prophet ﷺ said, None of you will have faith until he wishes for his brother what he wishes for himself. I wish for a meal for iftar. I wish for a drink to end my fast. I wish for a joyous Eid. For some, wishes are simple needs that we can fulfill. This Ramadan, join AMA in fulfilling the wishes of families in need across the world. No one will care for you like your parents will care for you. At Anur Education Center, we give children a loving home, a boys and girls hostel. We provide them with clothing, food and education. Be the child's parent by sponsoring a student for 18,000 rands or 1,500 rand per month. Anur Education Center, a place where children call home.